Hello, I'm Kelly Corsett. I am the Communications and Public Affairs Director with the City of Scottsdale. I'm also the staff liaison to the city's Veterans Advisory Commission, which is a group of Scottsdale residents appointed by the council to advise them on veterans issues and to help promote veterans programs and awareness in our community. As part of our virtual Veterans Day commemoration for 2020, I am pleased to be joined today by Mr. Pete Palmer. Now, Pete is chair of Scottsdale's Veterans Advisory Commission. He is a retired Brigadier General, United States Army, and also a proud Scottsdale resident. So Pete, welcome. Thank you for joining us. It's good to see you this morning. It's great to be here. So the idea behind doing an interview was to uh, both introduce the community to our Veterans Advisory Commission, but also to speak to a veteran who lives in Scottsdale and to learn a little bit more about you personally. So I'd like to start by maybe reaching back into your past and ask you, um, do you recall what compelled you to enlist in the Army way back when? Yeah, it uh, goes back to, uh, I grew up in a small farm town in upstate New York called Masonville. And uh, although I had scholarships to other colleges, and I was 17 at the time, uh, I had applied to West Point. I was qualified, but uh, I didn't get the congressional nomination. So my congressman wrote me back and said, well, if you join the Army and go to our the West Point prep school, uh, I'll nominate you the following year. And I'm going and had a discussion with my parents and my mother in particular. And she, uh, I was sort of leaning towards just going on to college and an engineering school. And then she explained economics to me on that uh, I'd have to work because they couldn't pay for it and I'd have debts and everything else. So if we went this route, I could potentially get my um, university time paid for, but also I'd get to play sports because they were big into that. So uh, I I was sort of hooked on the sports comment as opposed to working comments. So uh, I, I chose to do that and then entered the army at uh, 17. Uh, and the day after I graduated high school, I was getting sworn in in Albany into the U.S. Army. Went to basic training and then went on to the United States Academy Prep School, where besides doing studies, I played football and lacrosse. Well, that's great. And I did. it probably didn't hurt that uh, West Point is also located in New York State. So did it feel good to be a little close to home at that point? Yeah, I wasn't uh, necessarily geared to being to home, but uh, but you know West Point's pretty appealing. It's got a great college, uh, university. Uh, obviously, it's a military academy, so it has other things that are a little different from universities. But uh, I didn't see myself getting as good an education anywhere else uh, with what I could afford to pay for. So uh, how was your experience at West Point? Was it, uh, was it what you were expecting it and hoping it would be? Oh, it, yes. And actually, my time uh, as an enlisted soldier going through basic training, it actually made West Point a little easier because I expected it all. We, are, you know, we knew how to fold socks. We knew how to be on time. We knew how to do that kind of stuff. Uh, the academics were, you know, as any university. And I got to play collegiate sports, which was nice. And, you know, West Point pretty much wants you to do uh, more than just academics. So you had the leadership training. You had all the traveling. It, it was a great time. It was a growth, great growth period for somebody, you know, that grew up on a farm area and, and didn't see much of the world. And so when you completed um, your academic career at West Point, you obviously were commissioned in the Army at that point. Uh, what year was it and what was your first duty station? It uh, was 1977 when I graduated. And uh, in terms of uh, once you graduate, I chose the branch of infantry. So they send you through a lot of schooling, which included not only the basic course, but this is all at Fort Benning. Uh, but airborne school and ranger school. So uh, I did uh, all of those courses. And then uh, I always wanted to go to Germany. So we had my first assignment was in Kirschgorn, Germany. This was the Cold War time. Not many people remember that. Uh, and I should back up when I was enlisted, that was the end of Vietnam time frame. So that was a little different environment. Now you're in Germany and it's Cold War and we're up on the border defending. And uh, what we always found is the closer you got the border, the more the Germans liked you. So uh, it was, uh, it was uh, a great experience and, and 
I subsequently spent four different tours in Europe of 10 and a half years total. So we, we really like Europe. So uh, what were some other uh, places that you served uh, during your active duty career? Well, I served, uh, you know, you go to different commands. I did my company command at Fort Benning, Georgia, which was at that time frame, we had the Reagan uh, uh, defense spurge and we're getting all the new technologies and efforts. So that was good. I, I had the opportunity after command to uh, serve as an aide de camp for the commanding general at Fort Benning. And he liked to jump out of a lot of airplanes. So we did a lot of jumping at that time frame. I think I got 57 jumps in one year. Uh, but after that, uh, you know, you go on to other events. Probably my, my most favorite at time was my battalion command or squadron command where uh, the nation has training centers that we developed in the 80s. And uh, they're called the National Training Center and, uh, and we have four of them. Um, and most of them, as we call them, are dirt training centers where you're actually out in, in the dirt. And others was a uh, virtual training center, which I later commanded as a colonel. Uh, but I played uh, a Russian commander at our national training center. So we would rotate brigade size units out and they would fight a Russian regiment. And uh, I was the bad guy. So we would uh, we would get to go out and practice our profession on a daily basis. and uh, and and. It's, it's fun when you're doing your professions. It's a high-tech battlefield with lasers being the weapon systems and, and all aspects uh, participating in the event. So that, that was probably my, that was just pure fun to do that kind of thing. Um, and I'm go sorry, ahead. go ahead. Well, I was no, just going to ask, you, you also mentioned uh, uh, when we were chatting earlier that you, you did tours in uh, uh, as part of UN contingents in Kosovo, and then uh, you also did a tour in Iraq, is that correct? Correct. When I was uh, a colonel, I, I, was, uh, I uh, was pulled in to uh, be the chief of staff of 1st Infantry Division when we first went to Kosovo. Uh, I actually took care of the station while part of the division was down there. Later on, when I took brigade command, I deployed my uh, brigade to Kosovo, where we're doing the peacekeeping operations as part of that process. And then uh, coming back from that, I commanded the Battle Command Training Program, where we basically trained up all the units going into the second Iraqi war. And I soon followed them into Iraq, and we were, we were standing up the new headquarters uh, called Multinational Force, which is a coalition force. And we uh, transit we were in an insurgency fight, of course, but we also got through uh, the elections and we helped to get the first elections in Iraq done. So that was very interesting. I had a two-star Australian boss that was, was fabulous. So uh, he's now a senator in uh, Australia. Well, it sounds uh, like a very um, uh, diverse and interesting uh, career. Did you always intend to make it a career or early on were you just kind of taking it one tour at a time? Uh, I think uh, I, I basically took it to get the education. Uh, but when you get into West Point, they have a way of, you know, influencing how you think and feel. And uh, I, it was, you know, it was fun and exciting. And so every job seemed to go that way. So it, I just and after a point, you just say, might as well stay in. But I was lucky to, you know, continue to be promoted and continue to have good jobs. So I enjoyed it quite a bit. Very, very, you know, I got to see a lot, got to work with other services. I uh, was a professor at the Naval War College for two years, which was fun. Even coach Navy football in lacrosse, which is hard when you played at Army. So that's <laughs> not good when you have to go play Army to now be sitting on the Navy side. Well, it sounds uh, uh, very interesting. Uh, you mentioned it, it sounded like your favorite duty station that you, uh, where you served multiple times was in Germany, but did you have a favorite billet um, or, or maybe a, a, a particularly fond memory throughout it all that you, that you kind of look back on as, as uh, really indicative of why you enjoyed your service? You know, I, it, I can say I enjoyed every assignment I had. Uh, I'd say being in Iraq less so, but you're in a war and a conflict and it's always not nice. But uh, my favorite, of course, was when I played the op four, because anytime you're practicing your profession on a daily basis, 
uh, you enjoy you enjoy doing what you're trained to do. Um, so that was nice. Uh, but you know, every command was great. Europe was great. You get to see Europe, and uh, you know, we went went through lots of different learning experiences, and you just can't you can't replicate those anyplace else. It's just a great part to see all parts of the world and do that. So after it all wrapped up, um, what brought you to Scottsdale from your original home in upstate New York? Well, well, eventually you have to retire from the Army, and I retired after 32 plus years. And, uh, and, and you know, you're still relatively young at that time frame. I was in my 50s, so uh, we 54 to be exact. So uh, I was looking for a second career. General Dynamics offered me a job, uh, which was very appealing. And their company headquarters that offered me the job was here in Scottsdale. And they offered me to come in to build and grow their uh, edge innovation network, which actually grew into the whole corporate uh, innovation program for General Dynamics as a whole. So we ran uh, trying to do, we had up to 13 labs across here, England, Canada, and, uh, and we got to play with universities and research agencies and all kinds, and small company startups that are, or small companies, including here in, uh, in, in Scottsdale, really Tempe with uh, the university, ASU and U of A. So it, it was just exciting time. It was a great job. So um, that, um, I guess, was your first experience as a civilian um, in a community. And so um, with that as your background and in your time in Scottsdale, um, how would you rate or describe the environment for veterans uh, here in Scottsdale or, or here in Arizona? Well, first of all, General Dynamics was very veterans friendly. And uh, that was very impressive uh, because they, they, they reached out to pull veterans. Of course, they're a defense company, so they, they want veterans in the organization. And they had engineers and uh, veterans that were, you know, Annapolis grads, for example, that uh, came in as a young engineer. So that was good. Uh, Scottsdale, and actually, you, you know, you can't settle Scottsdale just by itself, but uh, for the whole uh, Valley place, uh, there's over 2,000 veterans organizations that in the in the area uh, that try to support different veterans activities. Scottsdale's has a has a few of those, uh, and and lots of the events are held in Scottsdale. And Scottsdale's been very supportive of that piece. And as you know, uh, we've started the uh, the co co veterans commission, where the Scottsdale leadership has asked us to see what else we can do, how we can take better care of our veterans in the area. Uh, most of our veterans actually are over 65, the high percentage. So most of them are retired here, although we are getting a younger crowd. So uh, the city was looking proactively on how to improve uh, the city's uh, interface and honoring of veterans, which is very impressive. Um, so what sorts of things the Veterans Advisory Commission has been up and running for about a year? Unfortunately, it's been like everything else in our lives has been um, quite disrupted by uh, COVID-19 and shifts in priorities and the restrictions that that has brought. But um, what sorts of things are the uh, are the Veterans Advisory Commission focused on at the moment? Well, it's, as you're familiar, we, we put together a work plan that we submitted to the council that was approved, uh, that was interrupted by COVID. But first of all, we wanted to get a try to get a clear picture of how many veterans we actually have in Scottsdale. So what's the percent of the population? How does that break down? Which I gave you some of that piece, but we're looking at all the specifics because if we understand how many veterans, what their age groups are, what their interests are, we can potentially... Uh, better support them and how we target support. Uh, additionally, there's a lot of hit, you know, Scottsdale was founded by veterans. So there's great history in Scottsdale's related to veterans that not only found this place, but veterans that serve, uh, that came from Scottsdale and now have returned and are successful business persons. So recognizing the history of Scottsdale is key. Uh, obviously the tourism is, is key. And I think we've got a historical component that we can do that. Um, and then uh, determining uh, veterans, uh, 
cer you know, ceremonies and programs uh, that we can get better visibility and, and honoring veterans during Veterans Day or Memorial Day and such. Uh, but also, what programs does Scottsdale need to consider in terms of supporting vets? As you know, the mayor asked us to specifically look at the homeless veteran situation and what might be useful there. And, and we brought in people that helped uh, to speak to us. Uh, we've looked at the city, uh, you know, the police fire and fire department and seeing who, how the veterans interface there. So uh, we've got a pretty lengthy uh, work plan. Again, we didn't get to all of them, but we'll we'll keep chugging and uh, and hopefully we'll be able to improve. Uh, let's say improve, but better advise the city council on on veterans related issues. Well, that's great and and very well said. As the as the staff liaison to that group, it's certainly been my honor uh, working with all of you, and and I look forward to continuing to do it in the year ahead. Um, is there anything else you'd like to say to veterans in Scottsdale before we wrap up? Well, first of all, Kelly, is you're a veteran, and I want to say thank you for your service. It was in the Navy, so <laughs> you know, come Army foot. I know I, we're just kidding there, but uh, thank you for your service and all that you've done and how you've carried on and more more how you've uh, supported the Veterans Commission because you've been very helpful with all of that piece. And I think we're all of the same mind of trying to take care of veterans. But to all the veterans out there, you know, whether you served because you were drafted in Vietnam, whether you volunteered and for it, the key is, is you served our nation when they called. And, uh, you know, I, I kind of like the song of when you when we were needed, we were there. And the key is, is we've been there. We've done our service to our nation. Now we're we're enjoying the fruits of our labor with a, a great nation and uh, that uh, we, we need to uh, continue to support. But I want to just thank all the veterans out there for their service to our nation. And, they, and we're all kind of when we've been in the service are kind of brainwashed to serve more. So we serve, uh, the selfless service is pretty cr critical. So you'll see lots of veterans doing lots of things other that they don't get paid for. They just do it because it's the right thing to do. Well, thank you very much, Pete. It's certainly been my honor uh, getting to know you and, and working with you. And uh, certainly thank you for your service. And I'd like to thank the other veterans in Scottsdale uh, for serving. Uh, we also have many, many uh, veteran families in Scottsdale, and we certainly want to recognize them as well as as those of us who've who've been in the service know, and those of us who've had family members in the service know. Uh, the whole family serves uh, when someone is in uniform. So this Veterans Day, even though we can't uh, gather in a group, we certainly want to say thank you to veterans in Scottsdale and families of veterans. Um, with that, Pete, any final words? No, I think you hit a point that I didn't cover that I, the families are critical to veterans as, as they have to trail you around the world and, and put up with you being on deployments and uh, being alone, taking care of kids. Uh, they serve as everybody else does and uh, highly uh, thank them for their service to our nation as well. Well, thank you very much, Pete. Thanks for spending a few, a few minutes here. Um, to those of you watching this video, if you'd like to learn more about the Veterans Advisory Commission or about veterans programs in Scottsdale, visit scottsdaleaz.gov and search veterans, and you'll find more information on the city's website. And please look for more information in the future and more communication from the city and from the Veterans Advisory Commission as we continue to serve veterans in our community. Thank you very much, Pete. Wishing you the best, wishing you good health, and thank you to all of uh, uh, all the members of the community who have joined us here today. Thank you, Kelly.